It's a very warm welcome back to the show to Brad Walter. Happy New Year. Thanks for joining us, mate. Yeah, Happy New Year, Martin. How are you? All good, thank you. Rocking and rolling back into it. I mean, you know what it's like, mate. Work. I mean, before you know it, your holiday's gone, doesn't it? It it, Just as a matter of interest, you know, it's like when you wake up half an hour before the alarm. It's just like, you know, do, do the holiday days actually, does the clock tick faster? They seem to, don't they? I think at the start, it, it seemed, you think, oh, I've got a long time ahead of me, this is fantastic. But, yeah, in those last, um, you know, the last week or or, or two, you, you, you start to be aware that, you know, you've got to go back to work. And, yeah, the days seem to go a lot quicker. And, uh, and before you know it, you're back there and there's probably things that you didn't get to do or or you've just got home and you're straight off to work and you're putting on shoes that uh, you haven't worn for a few weeks and things like that. All right, let's talk about the NRL, and the key word is not a word, it's CBA, it's actually an anagram, isn't it, I think what they call it, Collective Bargaining Agreement. Okay, uh, media boycotts, talk of strikes uh, and threats that the preseason competition won't go ahead. Essentially, just please explain to us, what is the, what is the players' beef here? What does is, what is the Players Association want? Yeah, so basically, this is a dispute, not... Not necessarily over the salary cap. The salary cap has effectively been agreed uh, on. It's been announced by the NRL that the salary cap this season will be $12.1 million, which is an increase of 22%. I believe that that's, you know, the, the players are happy with that. They've agreed to that. But what, what, what the dispute is over is the allocation of money that goes towards other things. Like, uh, so there's, there's more than $30 million a season is is effectively allocated, or yeah, is allocated towards rep payments, well-being, education, injury hardship, um, retirement funds, insurance, those sort of those type of issues. And the RLPA want, the, which is the Players Association, want uh, they want a medical fund and a past players fund uh, to be introduced. And the issue is really around uh, where will the money for that fund come from? I think the NRL's view is that. There's a certain amount of money that uh, is allocated in terms of um, grants to the clubs and money money for these other uh, you know other benefits, um, and so therefore this, there won't be any. The NRL doesn't want to um, provide any more money um, than what they're already providing for these other uh, other benefits. So effectively, um, my understanding is that if if these other benefits were to come in, they'd be at the expense of um, of some of the other. Uh, been a, uh, some of those other issues that I mentioned, rep payments, well-being, education. So the, effectively, there's a pot of money, and it's really how that money will be allocated, uh, and who will control that money. That's 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 what is at the crux of the of the dispute. Brad, you've been involved in this business for a long time. Is this unprecedented? This uh, self-imposed media ban by the players refusing to do any of that. No, I don't know if it's uh, unprecedented. These issues have um, have come up in the past, but not for a long time. Like the, the the players are pretty well um, taken care of. You know they they well paid um, pretty much across the board now. Um, the salary cap's going to see an increase in the the minimum wage as well. So um, you know so even the lower tier players are, are, are well looked after. Um, so there hasn't been a, a dispute like this for a long long time. Um, but there certainly have been issues in the past over money over. Um, I suppose uh, you know the players. In, I do remember uh, a big meeting with a group of group of players. Uh, they met with David Gallup when he was the CEO, and they wanted to see the books because because they believed that the uh, the NRL was holding money back from them at the time. Um, you know, and that was a there was a pretty I suppose a pretty uh, uh, you know heated standoff uh, that went on for quite a while then. So, um, but you know, certainly in the last twenty years. Um, I would say since since there's been anything like this, and at the moment, look, it's it's media bans. We're in the off season, so we don't really know what the impact is going to be. I don't believe that all stars in Rotorua will be uh, will be impacted at all. The players want to play. Um, the only issue really is the, the women. Um, they they have, at the moment they until they agree on the CBA, clubs can't sign players. So therefore, the the NRL players, NRLW players, don't have contracts. Uh, so that's a, that's a sort of a, a murky issue, but um, the teams were announced earlier this week, and and, and it said the players want to play, they want to represent their heritage and their and their culture. So um, I, I'm sure that they, those games will be largely uh, unaffected. But yeah, the the preseason games would be very interesting if we are heading into the um, 
the pre-season challenge, which is a new a new uh, a new concept, um, and we haven't got an agreement in place um, exactly what the stance will be. And obviously, that will mean that we're getting very close to the season. So I imagine things will really heat up in terms of uh, uh, both sides wanting to, I suppose, um, you know, ensure that there's an agreement uh, in place before round one. Yeah, Brad Walter with us, uh, NRL.com. And look, uh, you know, the idea that the, that the NRL begins without any pre-season matches, I can't imagine that there's a single coach in the place that wants that. And I know that they'll obviously be supporting their players and supporting them publicly and things. But going into a, a season without playing any hit-out games or just doing it all in-house, has that ever happened before? I don't think so. But if you do remember back in... 2020, when, when COVID um, stopped the competition, there was a 10-week break and players couldn't train, they couldn't get together or they couldn't, couldn't train as a team. Uh, and then basically they were, they were thrust back into it um, at short notice. There weren't any, um, there weren't any warm-up games or anything. Um, so they basically just had to hit the ground, hit the ground running. Um, uh, and, and, you know, I don't think the football was affected. So, look, a lot of players, like, you know, more than 150 players have come back from the World Cup. Um, so, you know, they, they, at the moment, a lot of them are sort of just losing their way back into it. Um, and I don't think they'll be overly affected, but there's also been a lot of roster changes at, um, at a lot of clubs. So, obviously, coaches do want to see new com- new combinations. Um, look, this weekend, um, the, Manly and, uh, and the Dragons are actually having, like, a, a posed training session. So that's possibly the sort of thing that we could see. And I think that, from memory, that is what happened back uh, in the lead-up to the competition resuming from COVID. I think we had some sort of scrimmages or they, that's how they used uh, the, the leftover the players who weren't weren't in the top 17, perhaps, uh, who weren't in the top 17 were, were then being involved in sort of like, uh, you know, post-training sessions um, because there was no um, second-tier competitions um, during that COVID, COVID period. So I don't know, they're the sort of things that I, I imagine clubs will look to do if if uh, there was a boycott of the of the preseason challenge. <sighs> Possibility, just your gut feeling. You've been around the game a hell of a long time, eh? Well, your gut feeling is this going to be resolved before the season starts? Sub part of that question is: Can the season start and continue if it hasn't been resolved? So, uh, look, yeah, I think it will be resolved. That that in my expectation. I think everyone's expectation would really be that it, that. It, that it will be resolved. I find it hard to believe that um, that an agreement won't be reached when the competition's about to kick off. There's too much at stake, and like I said, we're not really uh, money isn't really the issue. It's really in terms of how much uh, money. It's really uh, it's really the the benefits, um, the side benefits, and and how that, that money's allocated. That's the issue. So you know you you would like to think that the parties could all find some sort of common ground. Um, I think everybody know would would be of the belief. I'm talking about the, the players and and uh, you know and the NRL that a deal needs to be done before the competition uh, kicks off. So um, so I think that you know there'll be a lot of uh, emphasis and a lot of work done. But having said that, I mean these talks have been going on since before the World Cup, and there was an expectation it would be done then, and there was an expectation that it would be done before Christmas, and uh, you know and and obviously the expectation now is it'll be done before. Um, before the, before the season starts, so um, you know, hopefully, hopefully they're not too they're not too far away. They, you, you imagine they just got to sit down and, and reach um, some common ground. As I said, I think they're agreed on in principle on a lot of the issues. So you know, it's, it's a matter of like um, it's a matter of yeah, finding agreement on on the issues. And hey, the players aren't going to get their way on some issues, and maybe they'll maybe they'll, they'll um, they will make some gains in in other areas, but. I imagine there's, there's going to have to be some compromise, um, probably from both parties before a deal is reached. But you'd just expect that that would happen before before the season kicks off. Compromise, yes. Adults sitting down, talking, having reasonable, rational discussions. Good God, you think it's easy? It sounds a lot easier than it always is. Brad, I'm going to leave you with something. I want to put this to you. We only found this out overnight or overnight this morning in New Zealand. Okay, uh, rugby players, the All Blacks are not allowed to play more than five super rugby games in a row. Now, even if you get on the field for, because otherwise, you know, they need to be rested, rotated to be refreshed for the World Cup at the end of the year, because otherwise, you know, the stresses and strains are all too much, even though that they are players and they're under contract, you'd expect by definition that their job is to play. 
Uh, we've tried this in the past, of course. It hasn't worked. It hasn't worked. It hasn't worked. So that's obviously, you know, the, the, you know, the definition of insanity is to do it again, isn't it? Um, so even if you play one minute of one of those games, it counts as a game. Now I, I'm just you know I, I'm just I'm not trying to create you know chaos or, or you know here or argument or you know point fingers or anything like that. But I'm just saying the NRL players play Origin three days later. Some of them play for their clubs. Can you imagine ever a rule coming in saying that an NRL player is not allowed to play more than five matches in a row? Would that fly? No, I could not, certainly not the five matches in a row. I could understand if there was a some sort of rule that said if you play a game, you can't play again for another, you know, five, a minimum of five days or something like that. But um, but but no. Um, and as you said, the idea has been tried before um, and hasn't been successful. It's um, it, it is it is it's quite amazing, really, isn't it? To think that um, and and it and it, it, um, it takes away from from the competition as well from the super rugby competition to, to think that the star players aren't going to be there like it's 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 not really a balanced competition and uh and you've got to think like how much do the to, to the teams that are in the competition actually want to win because i know what would happen in the uh in the nrl is that the, the players and the coaches and the club would um you know they'll do whatever it takes to win and and, and they may not like it and they might it, you know people don't like backing up um so close to state of origin but the players also want to play for their club. Uh, and often, the, a player will be stood down or rested from a game after a State of Origin game because uh, his coach wants to ensure that, he, you know, he, um, you know that, he's, that he's not burned out or he doesn't aggravate an injury. Um, it, you know, but, you know, if, if they need to win the game, then if it's, a, if it's, a, you know, if it's an important game for their season, then often you'll see they, you know, they won't take the luxury of, of doing that. They'll, they'll, uh, they'll ensure that they play, so... Uh, no, I couldn't see that a rule like that coming in uh, into the into the NRL. Um, and you know, look at Premier League uh, football or NFL. You can imagine that coming into any of those sports either.